Just over a year ago, you wonderful viewers went absolutely nuts, showing your support and ultimately helped to fund and turn my smart home presence sensor that I'd been working on as just a DIY project into an actual product that you can buy, which I never ever dreamed would be possible. But now, one year later, we have another new presence sensor that we're adding to our lineup that I can't wait to show you. Our new millimeter wave sensor, the Everything Presence Lite, is a more affordable presence sensor for Home Assistant. So a lot of the feedback that we were getting with the Everything Presence One was people asking for a more affordable version that could work alongside the one that perhaps didn't have quite as many features or as much range for smaller spaces, or maybe they just wanted to experiment with Millimeter Wave to see if they liked it or not. I think Millimeter Wave is really cool technology and we are just scratching the surface with it. And I just want everyone to be able to try it out and see how cool it is for themselves. So that's why I really wanted to make the light. It uses Millimeter Wave to detect motion in a room. And because it's Millimeter Wave, it's capable of detecting a much smaller movement than say a regular PIR does meaning that you won't need to sit in your office and wave your hands around like this to get the lights to come back on. It's also got a built-in light sensor like the EP1 does so that you can read the light level in a room and use that in your automations alongside the motion to decide whether the lights need to come on or not. The millimeter wave sensor we ship by default with the light also supports zones and is capable of tracking three different targets at the same time meaning you can create different areas in a room and automate depending on where you are in that room. That's right, you can pretty much do real-time tracking of a person around a space, which is really cool. Slight side note, I know I'd said the light is our new sensor, but it did technically come out a few weeks back, but I kind of didn't want to do a video then as they all sold out really fast and I didn't want to make a video about something you couldn't even buy yet. But now it's back in stock as of this video releasing so right now it came back in stock and hopefully we will have a good amount of stock for those who want to grab one and it goes without saying that this video isn't a review or anything like that that would be a little silly but more just to show the features and kind of show what we've made but there are some great reviews out there already from smart home junkie Bearded Tinker and Digitally Refined if you're looking for some review content. The other big thing I really wanted to do with the light was to make it compatible with several different millimeter wave sensors, which you might be like, why would you want to do that? Surely a millimeter wave sensor is a millimeter wave sensor, no? Well, there are actually a lot of differences between millimeter wave sensors and not all sensors are created equally. And actually some sensors are just better suited for different tasks either for static detection where you are sitting really still or zone tracking or heart rate detection, longer distances and so on. So I really wanted to make the light compatible with different sensors so that if the one that we ship with light isn't quite what you're looking for, you can easily change it out for a different one that is. And we made it compatible with five different sensors. The SEN0395, which is the DF robot one that we use in the EP1, the Seed Millimeter Wave Light, the Hylink LD115H, the LD2410C, which is really popular, and the LD2450, which is the one that we ship by default inside of the light. It's also pin compatible with other sensors like the Seed 24 gigahertz, the Seed 60 gigahertz, and various other Hylink sensors. But I haven't tested the software on them yet. However, no reason that they couldn't work with them. So let's say you buy the light, but you're less interested in zones and you want to monitor heart rate instead, for example. You can swap out the sensor that we ship with the light for the seat 60 gigahertz heart rate module and you're good to go. It also means that if some new sensor comes out in the future, there is a chance that it can be replaceable with and you can re-add it into the light, unlike if it was soldered directly to the board. Some other features are that it has USB-C for power, of course, or there are optional five volt header pins on board if you want to use those instead. And we also got rid of the need for that jumper pin to switch between them, which is really nice. And then there are also four GPIO pins like before, if you want to add your own additional sensors and expand the light. Max range for the included millimeter wave sensor is six meters with a 60 degree angle. Be aware by the way about sensitivity differences at that max range and you can track up to three targets and add up to four different zones to track those targets in. 
Of course, it is based on ESP Home once again with direct access into Home Assistant to make it really responsive and of course, local control only. We also worked really hard on improving the overall experience of opening up the light, which now comes with its own custom matte black box with a gloss black finish. And then inside the box, you will find the case for the light as well as the PCB and the millimeter wave sensor. And then underneath the insert, we are now shipping with a two meter right angle USB-C cable, which I really like too. It's got a really nice white braid on it with metal caps, it's a super nice cable, maybe slightly biased. So you can now get right into the setup without needing anything else. And actually speaking of the setup, you will find the QR code right on top of the box as you open it with the URL underneath for you security conscious people that will take you through the setup guide, which will walk you through getting everything set up and installing the latest firmware and adding it to Home Assistant. Once you've got it added to Home Assistant, you will see a bunch of entities, including motion detection, light level, distance and LEDs, that sort of thing. And then there are a bunch of entities related to person tracking, including distance to target, angle, speed and X and Y coordinates, which are basically the position you are in the room relative to the sensor. So the X is how far left or right you are of the sensor and the Y is how close or far you are in the Y axis. Using these coordinates is how you can define these zones, which you will also find in the entity section where you can define the start and end X and Y coordinates. It's a little tricky to set up zones in Home Assistant just because Home Assistant doesn't really have a great way of visualizing or mapping them just yet. But the way I would typically suggest is to set up the zones is to take your phone and watch the device page and physically use your body to stand in the four corners of the zone that you want to map out, taking note of the coordinates and adding those into the zone information. Finally, you have binary sensors for each zone, which will simply indicate if someone is in that zone or not. Lastly, I get a lot of questions about what the difference is between the light and the EP1. And does this replace the EP1 and can the EP1 get zones and that type of thing? The main difference between the light and the EP1 is that the EP1 has an industrial PIR sensor alongside the millimeter wave, which gives great flexibility. The EP1 also uses a different millimeter wave sensor with a longer range and better static detection performance. And the EP1 also has a temperature and humidity sensor too alongside the light sensor. Like I mentioned before, the main goal with the light was to make a more affordable presence sensor that mainly focused on millimeter wave. So we stripped back some of the extra features like the PIR, like the temperature and humidity sensor and opted for a much less expensive millimeter wave sensor that has a bit less range, but does do zones. I actually see this sensor as a great combination alongside the EP1. You would typically use the EP1 in spaces that need a bigger range or a wider angle, or you want the best static presence performance or for more complex automations. Then the light is great for smaller spaces where you move around more and you want to take advantage of zones. And yeah, I kind of see them as working really well together for different types of rooms. Finally, are we going to add zones to the EP1? That's a question that I get asked so much now. And the DF robot sensor that we use in the EP1 isn't capable of zones in its current form, but we do have some things in the work currently that we aren't quite finished with yet. But please remember what I mentioned earlier about not all millimeter wave sensors being equal. And the EP1 sensor is insanely good at static detection at a distance. So yeah, I think they work really well together. Uh, and yes, we are getting more EP1s back in stock too, along with the upcoming Pro, which I am so excited about. And that's about it for this video. If you would like to buy an Everything Presence light, then we are releasing the latest batch of them alongside the release of this video. And I know so many of you have been waiting for them to come back in stock, myself included, after you were buying them in the first batch. And so now you can. Thank you so much for the incredible, incredible support over the last year and a little bit since we started selling the EP1. It's been just absolutely amazing and just a really fulfilling thing to do. And not something I ever imagined in my wild streams I would manage to do and have so many of you buying the stuff we make. That is just so amazing. 
I just wanna keep making really cool products that are number one, local control, and number two, work with Home Assistant. I've got so many ideas that I really want to get to and I think will be really cool and I think you guys will like. And every new thing that we make, we're just trying to get a little bit better and better than the time before. So thank you so much for trusting me and giving me the opportunity to do that. And as long as you guys are still watching and still supporting and still liking the things that we make, we will keep doing so. It's been a wild one year and I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you so much. I really do mean that. That is it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Oh, you know what, actually, I should put like a little mark in this box so that if you're still watching at this point and you see me putting this mark on this box, you'll know that this was the exact one that you got that I used in this video. And that would be really cool. I'm gonna do that. Okay, I'm gonna put it right in the bottom of the box here. So underneath the insert, I'm not gonna tell you what it is because then we'll get lots of people trying their luck. But if you get the box with this mark in the video, send me an email and I'll send you another light. How about that? That's difficult to get in here. Okay, so if you're still watching at this point, if you buy a light, check in the bottom of the box. And if you see the mark that I've left on it, this is gonna be the only one with this mark. Send me a photo of it in an email uh, for, through the website. And uh, yeah, I'll send, you, I'll send you a free light to go along with this one. Have a great day, everyone.